Hello everyone and welcome to the Punisher's YouTube channel. Wanted to show you some gameplay from the initial creations of my Take It All. Um, there's three different versions of the deck. The Damar I'm still missing wild cards for, but the other two I kind of played and I was doing a gold grind, which is basically for um, going from tier four to tier three uh, with my gold level on ranked, as well as just the daily gold uh, 15 matches. Um, so I wanted to show you guys some of that play just to, to see how the deck plays out uh, that, that I had created. Take it all initially. All right, so let's take. <clears throat> wow. Hi, who? Kermit the Frog here. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the gameplay. Pretty good hand there. Couple Paradise Druid, Incubation, Negate, Temple of Mastery, and uh, Forced in an Island. That is not a bad beginning hand. So, of course, incubation. We want to search for uh, Thassa or Agent. Did not get that. Pulled a Brazen Borrower in case we need to bounce a creature back. Okay, Island and Paradise Druid. Paradise Druid gives me any color. I should have probably pulled the Thief, but I went with the Brazen in case I need to bounce an attacker. Two Paradise Dru Druid now. So that allows me any color mana. Purple with pink polka dots. Now I'm trying to decide, do I want to attack? And he's good gaming me, like, are you going to concede? Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to attack or not. Um, you know, is it worth it to save the mana for the agent, or do I want to call his bluff and see if he will not block? It's not a good idea to trade when you're down, uh, meaning I have two creatures and he has one. But I'm probably just going to wait because it's it's not really a fair exchange if I lose one of the Paradise. Uh, it may hurt me later in the game. So I'm doing this for the Scry. Land? No. Nothing is a threat at this point. And there is a threatening creature. So, hmm. I think I will bounce that at some point. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do it now. Do I want to bounce another one is the question to slow the game down. Yes, I think I will. So it's always best to bounce the one with the highest mana so that it causes them to have to tap that in order to use the mana. And I pulled an unsummon. So everything is gone and I can attack cleanly. So uh kind of nix my uh brazen there make it a one one so i'm not attacking for three not a big deal i have another one so my opponent is at 13 i'm at 20. we are now i believe in like the fourth round fifth round Give him my eyes everywhere, let him scry a little bit. Maybe he'll get a better draw. He or she. Any color land. Attack with the flyers. I 
I have a blocker, the 1-1, one, one, uh, thanks to my opponent, that I could block for the 4. I another 4-4. Four, four. That is not happening. We'll throw a counter on a flyer, and that will be game. Now, bear in mind, I did not get the Agent, I did not get the Thassa, so the combo did not go off. But the deck plays pretty well with the Flyers and the multicolor uh, mana. Uh, if I had put a Thief out, I could have took some of the creatures away and played some of the opponent's creatures. So the second match... First round when you have no play, it's always best to play a land that you can let come into play tapped. Uh, in standard, it's the, the you know pay to life or comes in tapped. If I get those in my beginning hand, I always throw those out first. And then that allows me to play my second turn play, which is a Paradise Druid. Trying to decide if I want to throw out the witch land, of course, and then of course my uh, risen reef, because uh, you know island, forest, a lot of options. Now I have two agents in my hand, which is always fun. I just need to make sure that I have enough mana oh, and kill to uh, put the agents out there. Now, if my opponent had the card where they attack for 1-1 one, one and it did additional, I would be probably in a bind here. Um, this isn't like a red deck wins deck. It's a green and red, but it is the 1-1 one, one creature. So uh, you kind of want to counterspell that if you have a negate, but I don't have a negate in my hand. So the only thing I can really counter at this point is creatures. And I'm tapped out, so I can't counter that one. But I played the Hydroid to try to get card draw because I'm trying to get a Thassa at this point. Uh, the combo needs to go off in order for me, and there it is, in order for me to uh, take everything from the opponent. So now I have a Thassa, and I have two Agents of Treachery in my hand. I'm going to prevent that creature from coming out and make my Hydroid a little bigger. Can attack for all kinds of stuff. At this point, the Risen Reef is negligible because I have enough mana to cast the stuff that I need. So Agent's going to go out first just because I need to get rid of that 3-3 because I'm at 11 life. Uh, typically, I'll let my life total go down. You know, you can always, always, always use and concede. So what it was saying was um, you can always use your life total as a resource. Uh, there's a little dialog box that pops up whenever you play that is like a waiting screen that says, you know, your life total is a resource, don't be afraid to use it. And that is the case. Uh, some matches I have actually let my life total go down to like three and had a hydroid in my hand and used it and gained the life back and then killed the opponent. So don't be afraid to lose a little life. Uh, also, don't be afraid to block or attack with creatures uh, to call an opponent's bluff. So it, it depends on your play style. And of course, you know, you'll have to know what your opponent's going to do or guess what your opponent's going to do. And sometimes it'll work out for you and sometimes it won't. Typically, uh, I don't worry until my life total goes below half of my starting life total. And then I start to panic. Oh, I might have a problem. So, but use your life total as a resource. Don't be afraid to attack. Don't be afraid to block if you need to. And, you know, a good rule of thumb, never trade a creature if you're down. If they have two and you have one, Unless you have to block to prevent yourself from dying, don't block. Same way, don't attack if you know you're going to lose a creature if you have one and they have two. So uh, use, utilize those resources that you have available to you. Then you have those matches where somebody just concedes to you because they're afraid of your land. Land is scary. Now, um, 
people have stuff that comes up in real life and it could be anything from the pizza guy coming and okay i gotta answer the door for my chinese food pizza delivery or you know uh, a parent or your wife is like hey i need you to get off the computer because of whatever or you could have got a phone call you know who knows life stuff comes up so it does happen and when that does happen it's a free win for you sometimes people will even be nice enough just to give you the win in a ranked match just because they're being nice Briefly, I wanted to show you what I made for lunch while I was editing videos. I was actually editing videos, left to go to Dollar Tree uh, to get rice, came back, still cooking food, uh, editing videos, and then my food is ready. So uh, I actually wanted to show you what I made for lunch today, and I will actually give you the recipe for the food also uh, in the comments, as well as uh, probably little cards. So this is yellow chicken curry uh, and then rice so that's what me and the wife are doing for lunch today uh, cooking and editing videos and going to Dollar Tree and editing videos and cooking uh, multitasking uh, that's the way to do it so yeah I'm gonna eat lunch and I will be back in a few
And there we are at Dollar Tree. This next video is just a bonus video uh, because in the last video I said I was creating a brawl deck just as a bonus. So this is a brawl match, just so you know.
Now, everybody shows videos where they win and their deck just devastates everybody. But truth be known, you can't win all the time. So sometimes you lose. Most of the time, nobody shows you the matches where you lose. There are a couple matches that I really want to show you because my opponent's decks were really good. So I want you to see those because I want you to see what my opponent was playing against me and how quickly they killed me. Now, bear in mind, this deck that I created as Take It All is like in the alpha version at this stage. Like, it's just basically like a thought. I haven't edited or fine-tuned the deck yet. So I don't know if I would do a little better with different stuff, like counter spells and different things. Because, you know, the quasi-duplicates and certain things that were in the deck, I pulled out. And the deck has changed since then. So be on the lookout for my next video that will be the um, Take It All 2.0. And later on, I'll probably be posting a Take It All 3.0 and so on and so forth as I improve the deck as time goes on. But when you lose, make sure that you learn from your mistakes. Uh, I have a bad habit of making mistakes within the game that actually cost me the game, as well as some other mistakes that I make with putting cards in that actually cause problems for me. So, you know, if I search for a card... And then I turn around and put that card on top of my library and then all of a sudden play a card that gives me mana ramp and shuffles my library, major mistake.
Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, uh, you can check out one of my other videos here. And I want to introduce you to a couple friends of mine that have some really cool channels for Magic the Gathering. You can also click on them in the links below.